So earlier this year, Honda India launched a new 2020 Africa Twin here in India. Deliveries have now commenced and everyone is very excited. But should you get one? I am not so sure. And in this video, I am going to give you 5 reasons why the Africa Twin might not be the bike for you. Fuck, it's too hot, yeah. So in August of this year, I'll be completing 3 years of ownership of my 2017 Africa Twin DCT and I've ridden it a fair bit. And if you're following me on Instagram, then you'll see that I'm in love with it. So when the 2020 model was launched, I straight away started receiving calls and DMs saying, Bro, how's the bike? And Sachin, what's the upgrade? Or Sachin, should I buy one? Or hey Sachin, I've booked one, I'm so excited. And that got me thinking, do these people know what they're getting into? Because Africa to win Kharidna Ek Chize. In fact, I feel that buying it is the easy part. Whereas riding one and the actual ownership experience, now that's a different ballgame altogether. So, is the Africa Twin for you? Let's break it down. In India, the ADV segment is just beginning to pick up. And chances are this is going to be your first ADV or your first big liter class ADV. And it was for me too. The first thing that will hit you is the size of the bike. This is the 2017 model and trust me, it's big. For size comparison, of course, I had to pick the Honda Activa. Everyone loves calling the DCT Africa Twin a giant Activa. So this is for the satisfaction of you guys. I've also parked it next to my i10 so we get a better idea. The wheelbase on my 2017 bike is 62 inches. The 2020 Africa Twin is the same. Barefoot, I am 5 feet 9 inches or 175 centimeters. Or riding boost ke saath, you could add an inch and I wear a size M riding jacket. But in my the size becomes irrelevant once I'm moving. The bike is so well built and designed that you don't really think about the size once you're on the move. But if you're smaller than me, you might struggle and feel intimidated. Having said that, there are many short riders who have absolutely mastered these monsters. But for many of you in India, this is probably going to be your first big ADV bike. So be mindful of its size. You know, I'm in constant touch with a number of AT owners in India. And when I asked them unse pucha ke, what's the one thing they'd like to change on their bike, the answer was unanimous. I wish the AT was lighter. Now, if you're buying it just for highway use, and there's no problem. The bike is so well designed that once you're on the move, you don't feel the weight at all. But you're probably buying the AT because you intend to go light or even hard off-road. And trust me, you will drop it. Sometimes more than a few times on a trail. This DCT version weighs over 240 kilos dry. Although the new one is a few kilos lighter, it's still over 235 kilos. Add to that your heavy riding jacket and maybe some luggage and you'll be standing helpless just looking at the bike laying on its side. Sure, you'll manage to pick it up, but every drop will break your spirit and ruin your mood and sap tons of energy. And if you're with friends, after two or three drops, they'll probably stop assisting you and laugh at your helplessness. Is a 240 kilo bike something that you need to go off-road? If you're new to off-roading or if you're someone who wants to go wherever he or she wishes but lacks the skill of a Chris Birch, then maybe the Africa Twin is not the bike for you. Shayad koi dusra kam capacity ka bike or something mid-segment is for you. A Suzuki V-Strom 650 or a Kawasaki Versus 650 are fun bikes that you can do a light off-road with given the right tires and bike protection. My Africa Twin with its seat at its lowest setting is 850mm and at its higher setting it's 870mm. Although on paper Honda claims that the 2020 bike has been slightly lowered and also has a narrower seat, it is still a tall bike. With my riding boots on, I'm 5 feet 10 inches and this is my feet at lower and now at the higher setting. Not having a feet planted firmly on the ground while riding a tall 240kg bike on a tricky trail is not something for the faint hearted. For pure long-distance road touring purpose, the new AT has cruise control, tubeless tires, cornering ABS, 
easier to adjust suspension setup, taller windscreen, a massive 24.8 liter fuel tank, and 102 horsepower. But with 102 horsepower, if you are expecting the boom or thrill of a Japanese liter class on an inline 4, you will be disappointed. But it's no tortoise either. It will hit 150 km per hour in no time and stay there. I'm just saying that although it's a 1048cc engine, it's not a 0 to 100 km per hour in 5 seconds kind of bike. It has power but it has more usable practical power. For me, the power on my 948cc 2017 bike is more than enough. But then, I'm not a super fast highway rider. My riding style is smooth and easy. I'm never in a hurry. So many pehle bhi kaha tha, and I'm saying it again, most of the buyers are new to this segment. I know more than a few AT owners who saw Honda's commercials and then bought the AT to go off-roading. And the moment they left tarmac and hit a trail, they were petrified and they absolutely froze. Hindi mein kehte na, phad gai. Vaise hi kuch tha. The sudden loss of traction, the feeling of the bike moving around under you is very scary for a newbie. Many then choose to stick to tarmac after their initial unhappy experience. So, ask yourself, if you are just entering the ADV world and intend to go off-road as well, do you need a close to 20 lakh and 240 kilo giant bike for that? And if you are looking to only do long distance touring, then there's tons of options out there. Now let me be clear, I fell in love with my bike the first day I rode it and continue to love it. And if I had the money, I would upgrade to the 2020 model. But I know what I'd be getting myself into. I've spent 3 years with this bike and I know what to expect. But for many, this bike might be a bit too much. There's a reason why the KTM 790 Adventure and the Yamaha T700 are so popular. Because they are more manageable and easier to live with, both for daily commutes and off-road rides. Which brings me to the purpose of this video. Ask yourself, should you buy the bike you need? The bike that suits your riding style and intentions? Or should you buy the bike that you think you want and then regret later?